In the second third of the third century, the Danube provinces of the Roman Empire were subjected to the invasions of warlike nomads, Scythians and Sarmatians, who came to the Balkans from the steppes of the northern Black Sea region. The Romans called them Visigoths. In the spring of 250 years began the so-called First Gothic War. Scythian Sarmatian army led by the leader Niva invaded Lower Messia, modern Bulgaria, devastated it, besieging a number of fortresses. In the spring, a year later, the nomads began their journey into Upper Mesia. Roman Emperor Gaius Decius Trajan decided to intercept the Scythians on the march and press their army to the banks of the Danube to deal with the dangerous enemy thoroughly. As soon as the army of Niva came to the plain, its vanguard was successfully attacked by the Romans, who as trophies got part of the wagon. Finding himself in an unfavorable situation, Niva began negotiations with the Roman emperor. He offered to return to Trajan all the loot and prisoners of war in exchange for the unhindered passage of the Scythians across the Danube. Gaius Decius, who believed in his victory, refused. The nomads had no choice but to give battle, on which their future fate and life depended. The battle took place on July 1st of the same year near the present-day Bulgarian city of Razgrad. In Roman sources, the name of the area where the battle took place is mentioned as a Britus or Forum Sempronius. Unfortunately, the exact or approximate place of the battle could not be established until now. Most likely, the forces of the parties were equal, about 25,000 people. Perhaps the Romans had a small numerical advantage in the infantry. Scythians, going to the defensive version of the battle, chose a swampy area of the plain. The first two lines of Niva's troops stood in front of the swamp, one after the other. The best of their forces, including selected cavalry, nomads built a monolithic rectangle behind the swamp. The marshes were investigated in advance. All trails and passages passable for men and horses were marked with secret signs. In case of retreat, the Scythians and Sarmatians could quickly and safely cross the swamp and be under the protection of the main forces. Niva's plan was to withstand the first Roman onslaught for as long as possible, to wear them down with a stubborn defense, to break the formation, and then to lure them into the swamp under the attack of the main forces by a pretended retreat. The Roman emperor was so confident in his own superiority and victory that he did not care about any reserve. He lined up his legions in a single rectangle to ram strike a gap in the enemy's formation, to break into separate parts and disperse it. The Romans did not even know about the presence of the swamp. Gaius Decius ordered to immediately launch an attack. Barely legions came to the initial positions. The first line of the Romans clashed with the first line of Scythians, who put up a decent resistance. Almost immediately, the emperor's son Quintus Gerenius Etruscanus fell from enemy arrows and spears. So that this death did not have a negative impact on the course of the battle, Gaius Decius shouted to his legionaries, Do not fall into despair. With the death of one soldier, the battle does not end. For the empire, one soldier is not a loss. With great difficulty, the Roman soldiers broke the resistance of the first line of Scythians and Sarmatians, but behind it was the second even more formidable and impregnable. Decius threw his cavalry against it. Success again accompanied the Romans, but they were very tired and broke the battle formation. At this critical moment, the Scythians of the first and second lines began to retreat through the swamp. Gaius Trebonian Gaul, governor of Mesia, offered to immediately pursue the fleeing barbarians, to which the Roman emperor willingly agreed. He personally led the attack of his third line to become the sole victor. But everything for him ended quite miserably. Legionaries and horsemen immediately bogged down in the swamp, Falling under a hail of enemy stones and arrows, the Romans drowned, beaten out of strength, wading through the mire. Those who were able to overcome the mire were met by selected and fresh Scythians in full armor. Seeing the critical condition of the enemy, Niva threw his cavalry at him. It was no longer a defeat, but a complete rout. The Romans turned back and began to fight their way back through the swamp. Scythians chopped and stabbed their unprotected backs. Many legionaries sank under the weight of arms and armor. In this fight, Gaius Decius himself died. 
the body of the emperor was never found on the battlefield, from which it was later concluded that he drowned in the mire. Only a few Romans were saved from captivity and death, led by Trebonianus Gallus, that made his way from the battlefield at the head of the surviving cavalry. Losses of both sides were significant. The army of Gaius Decius lost at least one-third of its composition, and Scythians every fourth fighter. To the Romans at any moment could come reinforcements. The Scythians were still on enemy soil, having behind the back of the wide waters of the Danube. Realizing the precariousness of his position, Niva agreed to peace talks. Under their terms, the Scythians with all the booty and trophies went beyond the Danube shores. In addition, Rome was now obliged to pay impious barbarians monetary compensation for the fact that the Scythians and Sarmatians would not attack the state's possessions. Such humiliation the Roman Empire had not yet known. The next emperor of Rome became Tribonian Gaul. His imperial powers almost immediately after the tragic defeat at Abrita endowed the surviving Roman legionaries. True, the reign of Gaius Trebonianus Gaul was not long and was accompanied by numerous military and political failures. After two years, the emperor was killed by his own rebellious officers and soldiers.